Very good. Um, am I live? Yes. Great. In that case, uh, good afternoon uh, to everyone, or uh, given the occasion, perhaps good evening. Uh, I'm Lance J. Brown, the president of the Consortium for Sustainable Urbanization, and it's my uh, pleasure to welcome you to this uh, CSU event, the third in a year-long series of discussions with thought leaders around the world on our progress towards greater, greater cities for everyone. Our guest today, Josep Mojigas, is speaking to us from and about the marvelous city of Barcelona. It's my pleasure to introduce him, moderate today's program. For those attending who've requested AIA continuing education credits, you'll receive one HSW credit if you stay for the 45 minutes. Please see the event information provided in the chat and use the event number and use the AIA self-reporting option to receive your credits. For those of us joining for the first time, the organizer of this series, the Consortium for Sustainable Urbanization, is devoted to building bridges between the United Nations and civil society and the design professions, business, academia, and allied organizations. The CSU mission ranges from increasing awareness about emerging issues, facilitating knowledge transfer between and among policy and decision makers, and fostering connections, cooperation, and collaboration while at the same time promoting the new urban agenda and the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals, especially Goal 11. Uh, and for those who may not be familiar with those, I would offer you to Google them and familiarize yourself. <clears throat> this program is uh, presented with a spirit of collaboration. We want to thank all the people who partner with us specifically uh, the UN Habitat New York office, the AIA New York chapter, the UN Habitat Professional Forum, the NGO Committee on Sustainable Development New York, Columbia University CBIPS, and CEL, the Creative Exchange Lab. And of course, um, we want to acknowledge and thank the Office of Perkins Eastman and their entire team in New York and Washington, D.C., for uh, providing this platform and help uh, with this series. I also want to give special thanks and recognition to Rick Bell, my good friend, colleague, and dynamic CSU board member for spearheading the whole Green Cities series. I invite everyone to visit our CSU website, see our resources, see our publications, and register for our upcoming events, including our May 12th flagship event entitled Cities Matter, Resilient Cities After COVID-19, and June 3rd's upcoming uh, third Green Cities event from Paris with Marion Waller, advisor to the mayor of Paris, uh, and, uh, and beyond, perhaps uh, the next coming from someplace in Africa. Uh, today's Green Cities guest, as I mentioned, is architect Joseph Bohigas. Joseph holds a degree in architecture from the Escola Tecnica Superior de Arquitectura de Barcelona and at the Universitat Politecnica de Catalunya. He completed the MA program in Advanced Architectural Design at Columbia University and the MA program in Communication and Design at the Pompeo Fabra University, UPF. He's now an associate, associate professor, uh, professor at the ETSAB and a guest lecturer at various universities around the world. Josep was the co-director of the prolific BOPBAA Architecture Studio from 1991 to 2015, winning competitions and commissions, including the addition to the Tyson Museum in Madrid, housing in the Olympic Village, now called uh, Forum, and the restoration of a Molina Theatre in Barcelona. He's received numerous professional distinctions in architecture and design. Uh, uh, including three uh, distinguished FAD awards from the city of Barcelona. Um, throughout his years of teaching and professional activity, he's directed and curated many projects in cultural activism in the area of urbanism and the built environment, including the Baraka Barcelona, APTM, EME3, Arquitectos de Capsalera, and Monument at MACPA. Uh, 
All of these projects sought to examine perennial changes and highlight new solutions to the housing problem and other urban challenges. Since 2016, Josep has been the general manager of, the, of Barcelona Regional, the city's urban development agency. And in 2019, he became the general manager of the Agency for Urban Ecology, Agencia Ecologica Urbana. On a more personal note, I should say that from my very first visit to Barcelona, in 1960, I fell in love with the city, its medieval core, its waterfront, its expansion, its food, and of course, its people, not to mention strolling the Ramblas as often as possible. Since 1967, there's hardly been a year I did not visit. Hence, I've had the privilege of seeing the city grow and change and take its place as one of the lead leading cities of the world. Barcelona has managed more than once to entirely reinvent itself and to do so very successfully, often at great risk. The expansion, the now famous grid that resulted from the CERDA plan, the example is well known. I came to know the city even before its successful 1990 Olympics development, and I've seen it now respond to some of our very current urban crises. I know that Joseph Becerras has a special and deep association with the city. I know that he's deeply respected by his peers and college, colleagues for his knowledge of the city's history, culture, and urbanization. And I know that he continues a great legacy set forth by his family, and we're very fortunate to have him with us today. I know there are going to be a lot of questions. Please use the Q&A function to submit your questions, and we will address as many as we can. Uh, with that, I give you Josep Bojigas. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lance. Uh, can you hear me? I think, uh, we, think so. uh, we can hear you. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, nice presentation. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, Rick. And thank you, uh, Marianne Newman, please, uh, because she's uh, responsible that uh, of many things that happen in my life. Uh, also, my, my deep uh, and lovely relation with, with New York City. And I love to be here. And I'm, I'm, I'm impressed and nervous also because to relate these two places, although we are, I'm not there, but trying to relate it uh, online, it's for me a real, really pleasure. So thank you all for this invitation. And what I was, uh, what I will try to do, with may maybe too many images. So uh, uh, something that Lance said the other day, I, I like more to, to not to talk like a slideshow, but almost a movie. Uh, I, I will run through uh, these uh, many uh, images, and I hope that will give you a glimpse, uh, an idea of what we are trying to do now in Barcelona after uh, these, these years. So, but to, to go, to get there, I will have to go back and let me share my screen if it's possible. Um, um, I, will, I will have to go back some years uh, to the eighties. I think, can you, can you see it? Yes, we can. Okay. All right, I call this uh, lecture Barcelona's War, Win, Lose, and Trying to Reconquer, because it's, it's a little bit what's happened to us, at least in terms of uh, urban development. Uh, the, this first uh, person I would like to introduce is Pascual Malagall. I'm sure that many of you know him very well. Definitely, Marianne uh, knows him very well. He's the person who's responsible of a big, a huge, enormous change that we've been, we, we lived and we went through. This is the moment when Pascual Maragall was uh, saying hello to the world uh, because uh, we gained at that point in 86 um, the, uh, the possibility to, to do the Olympic Games of the 92. Um, this this uh, saying hello to the world was expressed even in the, uh, the day of the opening of the, of the Olympic Games with this hola, no? hola to the world because nobody really exactly, uh, but nobody know, Lance knew perfectly what was Barcelona but not many people knew it, not even where it was. So it was very important for them and for him to place Barcelona in a map. That was a, a sentence that we all followed to, to become part of this uh, uh, global uh, world and, and become an important city in, in this world, which is something that we didn't really believe that could happen. And, and definitely, uh, I think that this is the main uh, point, that the parting point of, a, of, a, of this story. 
a story of the Olympic Games that, of course, was very related with uh, with this background of the city, no, not even the pictures and all the time. Uh, I think was uh, uh, we said to ourselves that the city was the most important thing. We didn't really care about the games. We really care about the city and how to express uh, and to show and to and to say uh, hello, even with our uh, Olympic mascot that was also mm, with with his hand saying trying to hug uh, the world and saying hello. But, but this, of course, was uh, a story that started started uh, a little bit before uh, in the 80s, uh, in 79, in fact, uh, with uh, 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 the first initial transformation of the city with uh, choosing uh, many different, uh, when we had the, the, the democracy, the, the first years, trying to find uh, the, the places where they needed to be transformed. And I think this is a, a, one of the first plans that we can see all the many uh, different little plazas and streets and, and different urban spaces that were uh, trying to be transformed. Always thinking that uh, the, the first thing that we had to transform was this public space because we didn't really have them before. Uh, we, we couldn't really gather in the public space because during the uh, dictatorship, uh, public space, of course, we, we, we could go through, but we was not, it was not a place to, to gather and to, and to uh, be there and to demonstrate. So the first thing it's, it, it was to, to build up those public spaces uh, within a strategy that grow up uh, with the Olympic Games with the possibility of having uh, um, uh, other bigger uh, uh, upscaling, uh, this same strategy of, of finding the places which they needed to be transformed. In this case, these four big areas of the Olympic Games and the ring road that went all through and uh, placing the, the real space of the city uh, uh, as a as an uh, um, part of the imaginary of those of this uh, deep transformation of course this uh, after this uh, different uh, periods the period of the 80 of the 80s the period of the 90s and and the period that goes to the 2004 with a with a forum uh, it's uh, hundreds of uh, small and big uh, transformation that really change the, the way we see our city and the, the way that we use it. And, and I'm, I would say that, that uh, architects and citizens and politicians and the, all the agents that they, they and of course, visitors, uh, we're kind of proud of that, of that moment of transformation uh, of this city that it used to be uh, very different. No? We were just going through very fast of some of those achievements of spaces that they didn't really exist. Not here we see the, the, the palm tree plaza with the sculpture of Richard Serra, where before was nothing but a palm tree. And, and, and how those places which were abandoned uh, in the outskirts of the city or in the center, they were uh, uh, re, uh, covering, uh, recovered for the use of the citizenship. Uh, uh, even, uh, of course, the more larger scale projects with uh, big infrastructures and, and, and of course, the, the great transformation of the seafront where uh, we kind of discover the possibility of using of having uh, a relation with the sea, which we didn't really have before, but we just had one uh, uh, little beach, but, but the possibility of enlarging all these uh, areas uh, relating with the sea was also one of the main issues. I would say that uh, those periods, the, the slogans also kind of join a little bit what was happening. No, I think this first slogan of, of uh, Mariscal uh, it's very explains very well at that point. No, Barcelona. In fact, one word. There are three words in one. Bar is of course bar because at that point, before the, the democracy, uh, we do, couldn't gather in in public spaces, so we gather in bars, and all there was this boom of bars, the uh, design and and uh, related with this life of the 80s. Uh, cell, because cell means sky. So we could, instead of looking down, like we were looking for 40 years, uh, we start looking up and looking at the skylines and looking at uh, the mountain and look, looking at the future above the horizon. And ona, uh, that means wave. Wave, uh, of course, that's the main issue there that to relate again with the Mediterranean, again with the sea, with this big, big project. But this story which is a story of success of course has uh, 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 the evolution i think it's also interesting to 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 talk about uh, uh, because <clears throat> as long as as those uh, first years were very emotional and very uh, related with with the real issues and needs of the city of the of the city 
uh, in years uh, that as, as this went on, uh, maybe the, the leadership of the public leadership and, and the, uh, ob being obliged to be a successful city uh, uh, made us uh, to little shift the, the, the strategies. And uh, as you see here, Barcelona Mescamay, that means Barcelona more than ever, Barcelona Posa Guapa, um, Barcelona make yourself pretty because we have to be pretty to, to, to explain, to express uh, to the visitors that, that we were uh, a nice city to, to come and visit. And uh, these last uh, um, um, slogans, which uh, I think tells very much how this uh, same attitude came and, and, and went worse. Uh, in this case, Barcelona, la millor boutique del món, Barcelona, the best shop in the world, uh, which I think that relates a little bit what, is, what, what happened to that first uh, interesting and, and emotional uh, beginnings of those 80s. Uh, and you see like one of the last slogans that we had uh, that was um, in 2014 or uh, 15, that Barcelona inspires with this, uh, I, I would say, obvious uh, cloud uh, made of Trencadís uh, copying uh, the idea of Gaudí, becoming Gaudí like um, an element to, to explore, uh, for, to get together more tourists uh, to the city. So we went from uh, one first moment, very uh, interesting and emotional of the Olympic Games to, to another moment, which uh, I would say around the Forum Las Culturas, uh, which I would say we, it was the end of this period of, of uh, really creating a new uh, city. And of course, both with uh, the, the second part, the, the Forum of Las Culturas, uh, you, we kept uh, working with the same strategies of uh, recovering part of the seafront and, and, and really having new spaces for the citizenship. But in this case, instead of uh, doing it with a 100% leadership of the public uh, administration, uh, we had to do it by selling part of the city. So this logo, which is the logo of the forum, these two hands, uh, these two hands, I would say that, that it's, it's funny to, to also see it with these hands of the public and the private, uh, getting along uh, with in a in a process which I would say it has a, a very tricky uh, urban solution. For for instance, the same um, Forum of Las Culturas, like you have two triangular buildings. One which is completely public, which is a museum, which the the, the ground floor is completely public, and you have like there a lot of events with the same spirit of the Olympic Games. But next to it, there is another triangular building, which is a I would say one of the worst buildings we have in, 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 the, in the country, because it's not only uh, a bad building in Barcelona, but it's a terrible building uh, anywhere, <clears throat> made by Robert Stern. It is a shopping mall uh, close to the city uh, without any uh, dialogue uh, with the Mediterranean uh, uh, style of life uh, that, that in Barcelona we have. So these new parts of the, of the city had to be paid, and uh, to pay it, we had to sell part of our soul. And I would say that this is part of what happened, uh, and you can see it uh, in many places in the city. You, know? you, you, you have the city and, and they come like OVNI, like, like UFOs, uh, and they land to, the, to, our, to our city, uh, selling parts of the, of the land. And also, uh, to do it so, they call the best architects in the world. Here you have Jean Nouvel, here you have Ricardo Lofid, here you have uh, Dominique Perrault, you have uh, Richard Rogers, uh, and, and all these star, star architects that they know um, perfectly that uh, Barcelona is on sale. And, and this uh, selling the city and uh, having all these uh, architects with these with this, uh, projects and buildings, which in fact, they, they don't really um, uh, relate with the needs uh, of the citizenship. For instance, uh, you, you can see Toyo Ito, which is a, an excellent architect, that uh, we'll, we all say that maybe Barcelona has the best architects, but with the worst works. No? And, and I would say this one is one an, an example. No? You have Toyo Ito doing a building in, in Paseo de Gracia, right in front of um, uh, La Pedrera, and says that it's La Pedrera of the 21st century, which is only a mask, only a facade, because he didn't really design even the interior, just designing those masks of, of getting pretty, as we said before, no? to, to, to keep uh, working with this idea of having a, a city that looks great uh, to invest, 
that looks great to 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 sell it to to sell it, but not really working for the citizenship or uh, for, uh, Norman Foster that he when he comes always this idea of using Gaudi as an excuse no? to to do. They know already all those star architects that they can come to Barcelona and if they say something about Gaudi, we will fall down and we will fall in love with the, with whatever they they propose. No, in this case, uh, Foster proposing the transformation of the uh, football club Barcelona Stadium, uh, talking about the the trencadís of Gaudi of the dra of the dragon of of uh, Palauí, or of course Jan Nouvel, who's building up his his Heiser or his his tower, uh, um, uh, which is has the shape of the tower that that is not finished in the in the Sagrada Familia, and and <clears throat> or uh, well, that was the worst thing which uh, uh, we were about to it, it was about to happen, but we were lucky that the government changed and and we, that this, we we could stop it, which was uh, Adelson that wanted to build up a uh, Euro Vegas, uh, an Euro Vegas uh, Gaudinia. Uh, with the Gaudi style, no, and he wanted to build up the the museum, uh, the 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 hotel that Gaudi designed for. In fact, it was not really Gaudi, but anyway, this is drawing of this hotel for New York City, uh, and 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 Adelson wanted to build up like an interpretation of Gaudi in to make to have prostitutes, to have uh, um, game game people uh, with games, and and in, in fact, it was a terrible. Uh, a, a, a terrible and a, a logical uh, mm, mm, progression of what what I, I'm trying to say. You know, starting from the 80s and and getting to the 2000s uh, with this idea of having a city that is in one of the uh, first places of the European cities and has to sell its soul to keep to be there, to be in those rankings, to be in those uh, lists uh, of being the most visited, the most uh, whatever. So uh, at this point, not 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 me. It's not like I'm get I'm, I'm I became crazy. I'm here uh, uh, saying the bad things about my city. It's not myself. It's many people, writers like Manuel Delgado uh, with La Ciudad Mentirosa, the, the lying city, no, the, the city that lies, uh, um, or El Modelo in, uh, the, the model of Barcelona uh, at exam. Or I hate Barcelona or urbanization, which I think is a very interesting uh, book by Frances Muñoz. Talking about this banalization of the urbanity, and and of course our streets happen the same. It's not only those big uh, star architects and, uh, uh, and these uh, big buildings that were transforming the city, but also our historical streets like La Ramblas. We all know that La Ramblas is a is a street that we don't walk. Uh, citizens of Barcelona, we don't like to walk in La Ramblas anymore. Well, now we are we are very glad because now it's beautiful again. This year. Going going in La Ramblas is a, a beautiful uh, 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 something that we we thought we we had lost definitely. For instance, this image of the of the Mexican hat. No, it's a it's a Mexican hat that it's fabricated in China and it's worked by a German woman who's walking down the Rambla. So this is a, a, a situation which I think we lost uh, the identity of of many of our places. So th that's the way many of many people, many of us, um, uh, many uh, also politicians, and started to say goodbye, goodbye uh, or goodbye, or, or try to change the, the things because we were saying goodbye, goodbye to all those places that during the 80s uh, Maragall had recovered for the city and for the citizens, La Rambla, Parguel, Paseo de Gracia, Barceloneta, Ciudad Bella, Alborn, La Sagrada Familia, all those places. We don't we don't uh, go there anymore, and we don't. I feel uh, that we've been doing, of course, we are there in the ranking and we are one of the cities more visited in the world, but uh, we, I think we lost also our soul. So I would say that the, the transformation that we needed to, to face, uh, uh, to, to, to think about is, of course, during the 80s was very important to start talking and working with the public space, the urbs, no? what, the three ways that we call, the classical way that we call a city, no? urbs, polis, and kivitas. I would say that during the 80s is the, the, the time of the urbs, of the transformation of the physical space. Of uh, when, when we say Barcelona Posa Guapa, or Barcelona Make Yourself Pretty, it's because we are, we are dealing with this physically, physicality of the, of the city. Uh, after, after this idea of the urbs transforming into police, which police more than the, uh, the, the policies, uh, I'm talking about the transaction. The, the the of the of the city, but now I think what we are trying to deal is to put in the center 
the the people and trying to to shift from orbs to kivitas, which is uh, uh, <clears throat> what is a little bit this this uh, diagram tries to to show, no? putting the people in the center and around like a like a layers of an onion. You have like the right for housing, which would be the first. Well, the first onion, the first layer would be your health, uh, uh, the, uh, which we which we've been, didn't really been working with it uh, very much in Barcelona. The second is housing, which we didn't do anything. We've been all those years since the 80s that we didn't build any public housing. It's, we did a lot of public space, a public space which has been everywhere in many magazines, but we didn't really care about uh, one thing which is very important. We said, sometimes we say, if, if, we, if the city was a paella, the housing would be the rice. And we did all the, all the rest of the things of the paella, but we didn't really take care of the rice. Uh, uh, the, the third uh, layer is the, the neighborhood, the, the right to the neighborhood, the right to the city, the right to the metropolis. And of course, at the end, and that's also a right that we, 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 we can gather is the, is the, the right to, to become a, a, a global city, but not starting all over the, uh, the other way, you know? starting by becoming global and then trying to end up but not doing on anything about uh, your house or your health. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm going to tell you a little bit which are the strategies that we use. No, like filling neighborhoods with life, uh, uh, re recovering neighborhoods, the tran ecological transition, to reorient all those big transformations that we were stuck uh, with this old <clears throat> strategy, and also, of course, to thinking metropolitan and all these. Uh, different strategies, they are crossed with those uh, rights, the right of housing and, and neighborhood and city and, and metropolis. And, and uh, through that, uh, we had like all, all these uh, multiple projects that we uh, spread <laughs> or that we map uh, uh, again uh, in the city to also realize that we are not just acting in the center or in the tourist places or in the seaside, but to kind of uh, redistribute uh, uh, all the, like like Maragall did during the 80s, not trying to find the opportunities, not only the places that they are already very marked, but but other uh, places around and, and the outskirts and in different areas which the, the, nobody goes and nobody uh, cares. Uh, this uh, uh, different uh, strategy of all these different projects, I'm just gonna try to to uh, explain one or if I have time, maybe two. Uh, uh, two, which they're completely complementary. One is how to recycle uh, all the city that we already, it already exists. When, we, when somebody asks us, which is the city of the future? I always say the same, you, you have to take your head out of the window and this is the city. The city that you see is the city of the future. We don't, we, I don't think it's uh, uh, <clears throat> optimistic to, I think it's very pessimistic to, to think that the new city would be, the city of the future would be something new because the old one, we, don't, we, we, we think that we cannot manage it anymore uh, and we have to do like perfect cities or perfect neighborhoods. This is something we don't believe also because we don't, it doesn't fit uh, in the interior uh, areas of, of the city because it's very packed and very dense and very compact. So the idea, very most important idea is to recycle what, what exists already. And this is the idea of the super block strategy. And the second idea, which is complementary, uh, is the idea of how to uh, uh, go through the, the, those uh, outskirts uh, uh, following the line of the ring road, which is something also that we, we don't believe anymore. If, if it's something that had been done during the Olympics, but it's an uh, uh, enormous uh, quantity of money invested in, for the private uh, uh, transportation. There's something that we have to reorient and at least to also to not allow the, the, this road becomes a frontier. So. Uh, other projects uh, that are related with the geography of the city, like how do we relate with the sea? Uh, that, that of course, the sea also is something that we've lost. We've lost because there are many uh, uses that they are not really related with the uh, with the city, or the other areas like the Bezos River or the mountain or the Bez or the Llobregat River. So uh, it's an excuse uh, to really rewrite uh, uh, our relation with the geography. And also with the with the neighborhoods, uh, with the other city neighborhoods. But I'm going to uh, explain a little bit this the, the city block. The city block, as I said, is an, uh, an idea of recycling the existing uh, Sardar grid. Uh, this is just a, a diagram. That the the uh, real scheme 
is this one like uh, taking out cars and and allowing those streets to become part of the of the day life of the citizen the the strategy is very simple you have uh, like these nine blocks of the Sarda grid, and uh, instead of having those uh, streets going through, uh, you, you allow them to become green corridors that connect uh, between them. The, the, uh, this uh, idea, which is uh, simple, it's, it's about a little, a little neighborhood, because here it's about uh, between six and 10,000 people living in these nine uh, blocks. It, they become like a, a little uh, neighborhood itself, and uh, it can happen many things uh, if you take cars out. One thing is that, uh, of course, people are where cars uh, used to be in the section, and the topography can change. But also that the the conspiracy of of the of the floor and and even the, the textures of the floor or the or the trees, the kind of trees that 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 maybe it's are necessary to block the noise and the and the smoke of the of the cars at one point, but then they can liberate it. They can not be they, they don't need to be linear or even the light. No. So different strategies that changes everything. Even of course the users and, and how each corner where they used to be cars that they can become uh, little places for the neighborhood. But why we do promote uh, they are very obvious. One for of course is to release a 70% of the space which just was just a decision. Um, of course, to to improve the habitability and, and the urban quality, but, uh, but of course, one of the main decision is uh, because of the air quality. We have uh, one of the worst air qualities in Europe, uh, in Barcelona, and also in Madrid. Uh, also because of the geography, sometimes the the polluted air stays there. So it's very important to take out all those cars from the center of the city. But of course, it's uh, maybe an even as important as the pollution as the as the air quality is the noise. In fact, the the superblock strategy starts with with the problem of of, a, of noise. How to reduce the noise in the center of the of, of the sample? But also, of course, has to be with with a with a, a heat island effect and 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 mitigating uh, climate change and, and of course creating new shadows and, and new ways to relate with, with the green and the, the ways uh, uh, to create those islands um, for uh, climate uh, um, emergencies. But uh, this, of course, liberated with, with, a, with a amount of green that can be, you know, that Eixample is a place that we don't have in La Champla, many plazas, not either, not even a park. So it, instead of having a, a, a central park, I would say we, we sprout this this idea with the streets that uh, that there were cars. But I would say one of the main uh, transformation is liberating all these of the, of the crossing uh, in the center of the super blocks uh, and creates these four squares in each super blocks, four squares which each one has two thousand square meters, which is almost the same of the little uh, of the squares that we have in Grafia. No? So it could be articulated all this area with this new 150 new square, which, square, which is something amazing. Um, in, instead, is is a, is a biggest uh, recycling project uh, with 6 million square meters that could be released uh, with this uh, strategy. And of course, we want all, all these spaces because we don't want uh, mm, polluted air, we don't want cars, but also because we want activity. Uh, so the other way is how to we organize all these uh, little new neighborhoods to create uh, and to allow uh, new activities that now are, are not possible. And, and this happens uh, related very much with, um, with something that we take, we took from New York, which is creating a new um, net of public transportation, which is supporting this uh, new structure of the Champla. Uh, the buses are vertical and horizontal, like like in New York now, and this is already implemented. That was the first step to to create the super blocks to create this new net of uh, tr public transportation. Uh, in, uh, finally, with these two main things, no, you see in Eixample, they go through every day three three hundred and fifty thousand cars, uh, more than the highways and the ring roads that together that we have in Ronda Laral and Ronda Litoral. So it's this is not possible to accept. And also the other thing is what we were saying about the, the, the quality of the air. So to do so, we, we made uh, one pilot and we did it without permission and we did it with our students 
uh, from, from five, di five different schools of architecture. We got together and we went there and we choose one area that could be done uh, during the, the, the Fiesta Mayor of this neighborhood. And we, uh, uh, we paint, uh, we painted and we blocked uh, the entrance of, of, the, of the cars. And with uh, plastic bags, uh, with garbage bags, we, we, I think I, I love this, this image, which I think is the more radical image of the super block, which is uh, saying to the cars they are not allowed by just uh, taking out uh, the, 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 the street lights. Um, and with the students, we, we make this during, uh, for, a, for a week uh, and we prove if this, uh, this idea of the super block could, could work uh, and it, it worked, but uh, of course, uh, trying to, to bring up uh, uh, the community to, to gather and to, and to share uh, with the students the multiple possibilities, no? where, where a park, where a, where a place where a, a car was parked, then could, could happen uh, things like, like if, if, if a car, it's possible that they park, why, why don't we do a swimming pool or, or many different other actions that happen in places where before there were cars running at, at uh, 60 kilometers hour. Uh, one, of, one in each one of those four uh, plazas, uh, it has one theme. In one of them, we call it democracy. It was the place to, to debate. And it was, I think, the most emotional part. Uh, we create in the cross where, where there were cars, uh, a, a place, a parliament, uh, which is in fact, we draw the parliament of Catalonia exactly with the same size. And we started discussing here is Salvador Rueda, which is one of the inventors of the idea of the super blogs and the former director of the agency that I'm, that I'm director now. Um, uh, uh, Janet Sanz, which is the politician who, who runs the whole thing. Iñaki uh, Baquero, who's the, a professor. Here there are the students, the neighbors, and, and the politicians uh, discussing. We started uh, discussing at, at, uh, at four in the afternoon, and at one at night, we were still there uh, discussing. And of course, this happened that the day after uh, became, as, as I think that the tactical project should be that become a big discussion all over, all over in all media and uh, create, of course, people that they were completely against and people that they were, uh, uh, they wanted to have in their neighborhoods also one experience like this one, because it was a, an unusual uh, vision. No, the day after we, we, the students, we left, of course, we kept the, 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 um, the Ayuntamiento decided to keep the super blocks, but they still didn't know exactly what to do because the tactical uh, uh, project that we did uh, was not uh, possible to, to keep it because it was with uh, no money, with uh, with materials that they would, wouldn't last. So uh, they st it stayed like like this. No, but I think it's a beautiful also image of what could happen. What uh, in fact after with the pandemic happened everywhere. But at that point, it was an amazing image. And of course, it started like projects which were still tactical, but uh, more permanent to really uh, reconfigure uh, this place that was uh, 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 a pilot project. But uh, of course, this went on and this was the first uh, super block, but the second one was done already directly with, with more uh, resources and, and it's, it's in next to uh, a, a market. No, this is the market of San Antonio and all around and, and next to it had made a couple of super blocks new, which in this one, there were no uh, discussion because everybody now, of course, uh, wants to have a super block in under their, their houses. And in this case, it was done more less uh, uh, zero tactically in this case uh, uh, and more permanent uh, decisions. But uh, now uh, um, after the pandemic uh, started, uh, then uh, it was an opportunity to enlarge the strategy and to start uh, with uh, tactical uh, techniques uh, to start proving uh, these same decisions that we took in the in the those two pilot super blocks to start really uh, reconquering uh, new spaces for the citizenship, and and this idea now is being. Uh, and large with the uh, international competition that we just uh, finished and, and that we now are starting to do the, the building projects for uh, enlarging this uh, project to uh, an idea of uh, uh, different streets of the whole um, Eixample being uh, converted in, in all those lanes that connect super blocks. No? And, 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 in this, and this is going to be done uh, in, in a couple of years and we're going to see, this is a little video that maybe 
maybe you won't be able to, I don't know if, if you can hear, but here expresses a little bit this strategy of the competition that, that we just finished. And that this is the 2000 square meters of the, each of the crossings that become uh, important places for the neighborhood. These are the ones that they are already done. And the strategy starts to extend with these first four streets, uh, four crossings and, and four streets. This, uh, and then the, the, the next step, which are, uh, it's already starting, is how those, uh, this net uh, gathers the whole example and and the uh, and the uh, competition that just just finished won this this proposal for the street of of Consell de Seine, which uh, as you see now it's a street that used to uh, uh, have those cars in the middle and it's called the people in the center because it's uh, i think it's it's something that uh, it's, it's in all the policies uh, urban policies that that have been taken so this one was important and it's nice to to realize that this is the uh, the option of of this project to to put where there were cars uh, the people walking in the center and putting the green and and the relation with the commercial with the spaces uh, gathering around uh, in the in the in the areas aside but also uh, other because there are four streets and and four plazas other other streets has uh, other strategies and and the plazas uh, the squares in the middle of the crossings, which uh, some more uh, kind of gardens, other spaces to to allow it to gather around uh, to have a movie in, at night or or games for the kids or um, or uh, other more vegetable solutions. So now I think I, I took too many time and and uh, I can stop here just running through the other strategy and i'm not going to explain it because there are many many projects around this but this is the other as i was saying no the different uh areas around uh the city with these four big projects of uh, of the, how to rethink uh our relation with the sea and our relation with the rivers and our relation with the mountain and i and i leave it here uh and thank you very much Thank you so much, Josep. Uh, you've given us a lot to chew on, my friend, a lot to chew on. Uh, I, I, uh, we, we have a number of questions. I, I want to uh, begin just by offering a, my own sense of nostalgia, given your nice historical uh, references. And I realize I've actually visited over the past, whatever, 60 years, Barcelona, and seen these evolutions. So I, I remember the extraction of built space from the Barrio Chino and Barceloneta, the careful uh, acupuncture uh, to put open space where it hadn't been and to maximize open space where it could be developed. I think the, uh, the, 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 the trajectory from those plans, some of which started back around the Olympic time, 80, late 80s, early 90s, and the creation of the most amazing small open spaces, which I am constantly referring to, which were um, often not, not uh, populated with obstacles, sculpture, arts, but made serviced with electricity and water so you could have different festivals that they, they became multi-purpose because they were designed to be so. So fast forward to the super blocking and uh, the questions which have come forward from uh, various people that really are focusing mostly on that. There's much we could discuss, certainly questions I have, and maybe there's an intersection. Here in New York, where I'm speaking from, the streets have become a great uh, canvas for debate in terms of how they're going to be used going forward as retail, mostly restaurants, have come outside to be safer. And, and now there are questions about the proprietary use, recent discussions about 
people who are less abled or older having the obstacles of restaurants and the bikes congested and so on. So managing the street, managing the traffic, um, uh, uh, managing the proprietary uses. And I think uh, even to the issue of, well, what does, what did happen to all those cars that used to be at the curb? Um, I, I was going to say, I know that you've been fairly successful in burying a lot of those, but if we could talk a little bit about, we, we, we've heard the advantages, so I'm going to just um, lay them out. Questions about, uh, is there an issue with personal vehicles and, and parking? Um, is, there, is there space for gardens and fruit trees? Um, is there a, a, a conflict with the Serda plan at all? Um, uh, and what are the issues of local circulation, buses, et cetera? I would start with that. I would start with the issues of, of how do people circulate through the city where they might before have used other means? Uh, and there's something that uh, in, in Bazar General we're doing now uh, a plan for the walkability, or uh, it's called uh, uh, in Catalan, a pla a peu, uh, by foot, uh, plan by foot, or something like that. And and it's it's interesting because uh, I think that Barcelona has um, uh, fifty percent of the, the moves of of the people around the city are done by foot and it's something which is amazing we are now doing a benchmarking to see if we are one of the most in, in with the same size and the same one of the most in the world of, of the cities that, that the people that they what they what we really do is walk from one place to another so uh, this is what has been very important to to take many of the decisions because 50 percent of the people move uh, by foot and 30 per, uh, people move uh, with public transportation. So, in fact, there's there's a few people who move by car, although it's packed of cars. It's full of cars because it's very dense and and and, and it's it's a terrible situation that we have. But in fact, it's only for this uh, other uh, uh, twenty percent of, of the people who use uh, cars. So it's very, uh, in fact, it's very easy to deal with this decision in terms of circulation because uh, we are. Um, um, <clears throat> Uh, it's 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 the number is the seven. If we take out the seventeen percent of cars, uh, all this project can be done easily. And taking out the seventeen percent of cars is not that difficult uh, at this point. Uh, also, reinforcing the movement uh, through uh, public transportation and making this plan of people of walkability, which I think is it's it's important. And if you think that most of the people walk, then all the programs that you decide to have around around uh, uh, the, the people that they are uh, walking or running or stopping or uh, uh, gathering in the, in the public space, then uh, m most of the decisions that you take of which are the programs that should be related with are, uh, um, have these this acts of, of uh, thing. Uh, we think through uh, a little bit this, this idea of uh, placing the people in the center, the people that walk uh, in the center of all decision. You know, ca carrying on from that for one moment, another couple of questions which have been raised. One, uh, the transferability of the idea of super blocking to other cities, which I think we can discuss uh, certainly easily with the idea of cities that are based on the grid. And then another question, which was the obverse of how does this work in the organic part of a city that's not a grid for super blocking? where you know, I thought I would just throw in my two cents relative to the old Gothic quarter center of Barcelona, which has been car free and paved building to building for as far as I can recall, probably a good 20 years that it's that the, 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 the Gothic quarter is one giant super block right. <laughs> uh, right. in a yeah, certain it's, way. Uh, it's, with, exactly, it's exactly it's exactly exactly like this. In fact, the project of super block um uh salvador rueda the 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 one that he was, was in the picture before um he started uh saying that that of course they did they didn't allow him to start proving it in the in the champla uh, but they allowed him to prove it in the gothic quarter 
So the first superblock uh, is the superblock uh, in the in the old town, and the second superblock, uh, in fact, is in Gracia, which is a, a small town next to to. The, and, uh, that was the first proofs, but the first uh, pilot superblock in the Champla is the one that I was explaining, which nobody wanted to do it because everybody thought that, and still many people think, and architects and urbanists that that to. Uh, the, the, the best thing of the of the Champa Sarda is that it has no hierarchy, that every, all the streets are the same. And, and, and to do so, you start by selecting which streets should uh, um, become uh, one thing or the other. And uh, these many things think that this is uh, something that if uh, Sarda would uh, waken up, would die again, if he saw that, that we are doing this thing to his Champa. But I don't think it's true because already now uh, the streets are different. Uh, the, there are streets that they go down, there are streets that go up, there are streets that, that they are uh, double the wide, there are streets that are diagonal. So, in fact, there is already a hierarchy. So, in fact, the project of Superblocks kind of works with those hierarchy and allows uh, to, to cars only to go through uh, with a spe special streets. Uh, I have a, a couple of other questions that have been both delivered and, and uh, from my own curiosity, but let's see if we can um, focus for one, one minute on what I, all, I, I might have referred to earlier as, you know, what are the um, climate risks to the city? What, what are the equivalents of climate change uh, considerations or natural phenomena of flooding, freezing that we've had in other parts of the world, the effects of uh, storms and how is risk managed? But since we have the pandemic uh, on beyond, beyond the threshold, we're dealing with it. How has the pandemic uh, altered your thinking on this? I mean, on one hand, you could say, Barcelona got lucky that its whole super blocking initiative was actually hand in glove with the re global response to the COVID. You know, let's get outside. Um, but beyond that aspect, are there radical changes that you're seeing developed based on climate change, based on um, disaster uh, a la COVID? Well, in fact, all goes along. Uh, the decision of, of the Superblock project, the root is the health, is health and, and climate change, the health of the people and the health of the planet. Uh, this, this is the main uh, issue, and maybe because of the world started, or at least in, in, in Barcelona, uh, the people started to realize that this was a real issue. They started to believe in Superblocks, because before that, nobody really thought that we needed uh, to take cars out or to have more green or to have um, uh, those spaces more uh, suited to, to, the, to the planet but, um, because nobody really thought it was an emergency. Now, with the COVID and with the climate uh, uh, change emergency, uh, with emergency, everybody kind of shifts the idea. And I think it helped a lot because um, also the, the COVID uh, allowed us to create all these new uh, strategies, uh, tactical strategies, that they were all aligned uh, with the future transformation of the uh, super blocks. Uh, so it was a, a proof also. Uh, we needed to change the public space because of the COVID, but in fact, we were doing it as an excuse to doing it, aligning with the, with the super block uh, strategy. Uh, along with those same lines, the, the issue of health, and climate and the planet. I know that Barcelona has been um, somewhat progressive in a couple of areas that I'm familiar with, um, but I'm interested to see how it intersects with the super blocking. One being the issue of uh, how, to, how does Barcelona generate or collect its energy to run itself? I remember during the New York uh, Superstorm Stan Sandy, when we had blackouts, there were great discussions about the resilience of Barcelona in its energy network to be able to moderate, shift, and revise how energy was delivered to, to uh, um, deal with breakages and linkages. Uh, uh, so uh, how it deals with its energy, and I know there's a program to put hot water heaters on the roof to do things to maximize what the individual buildings can do. And on the this staff side, and again, going back to the super block, 
how does Barcelona get rid of its waste? Do these big trucks still roll through the streets? Do you have it in underground vacuums? How how do how do you make energy? How do you deal with waste? Um, well, the, the energy uh, uh, thing we, we made something that was the main issue and the departing point of a, a, a deeper transformation, which was to create a public uh, company of energy, and this was done. Uh, well, two years ago, or three years ago, maybe, which is Barcelona Energia. That was the main thing because we were trapped with all these big companies that uh, they didn't allow us to to create uh, policies uh, related with people. Uh, they were all related with money and not with people before that. So now uh, uh, it's it's been started only first uh, the first year with only public uh, buildings, but now everybody can join. The Barcelona uh, Barcelona Electrica uh, that that allows uh, fair uh, dialogue uh, with the company because it's public and it, uh, of course is related with many social issues also eh? and and this is what was one first uh, social and very important step. The second one is that this uh, social this uh, this company is only uh, fit with. Uh, um, energy that it's clean um, that comes from um, different resources uh, of course we have all those plants that you will see I think I showed in some of the pictures that they are next to the sea that they were done for the forum uh, but there are some others and they they all uh, uh, um, the, the energy that we use in that that company is this but of course behind that there's a, a whole project of having uh, using for instance the Industrial areas that are inside of the city, which in fact there are two big areas in next to the rivers, the two rivers, uh, to use all the roofs to to become like the big uh, power plan uh, for to to have like the energy for for this company. And about the waste, um, uh, it's it's something also that it's a big plan that that we start to shift from uh, those big trucks uh, and those uh, different selection. Uh, I, I don't. I, I won't find the words in English to, to express all this because there are more technical words, and I don't. I don't find it. But anyway, all those uh, the way that we we all Barcelona was working, we are changing, and now we are, we took uh, like these three neighborhoods, pilot neighborhoods, which we we are testing to do it like the old way, which is hand, uh, door to door, and it's it's uh, we changed a lot. It's it improved a lot, like from uh, sixty percent of of recycling to. To 90%, 80, 85% of the of the uh, of the whole garbage that is being recycled, changing this new system. So it's kind. It seems like nostalgic, but it's the most efficient way to to really uh, recycle the 85% uh, of the of the whole uh, thing. But as as someone asked this question very specifically access for service and emergency vehicles and relative, let's say, to the hand waste collection as you move through the the um, pedestrianized super blocked streets does that mean there are smaller service vehicles or, yeah. or or is it done by this time of day how do you actually intersect the service i i can imagine um i don't know if you have the bollards as you have in the gothic center the bollards that go up and down people have buttons they get access for delivery i assume this works for the emergency vehicles but for things like um the other aspects deliveries waste and all of that they do intersect still with the with the super blocks. Yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, of course all the projects have to have a lane, a service lane, because also there are some of the buildings or, or many buildings that they have parking uh, underneath, so they have to get there. Uh, but then if you get there, uh, you you cannot run more than 10, 10 uh, kilometers hour, uh, and uh, I, I didn't show you, but you you cannot go through a super block. You have to turn and and you leave the super block. So it it each street enters and goes out, but not in a, in another street. Uh, uh, it's a very simple scheme uh, that that not, doesn't allow to cross. You cannot cross super blocks with your car or or, or motorbike or whatever. And for um, deliveries, which is something also that we are we are learning and changing the plan because it's something that for all of us, I think, and all the cities in the world are now. Are doing their own plans for for the the deliveries and and because this changes a lot changes a lot 
Um, there are many theories, in, in, and it depends on on the grid and on the neighborhood. Because uh, we are trying, for instance, one thing that that is very important is to realize that that cars are leaving the city, and it's not because we are mm, doing super blocks. It's because I think it's a tendency also, uh, and and parking uh, parkings we will have to. Uh, think what we're going to do with all those parking lots because Barcelona is full of, of under underground parking. Uh, so we start uh, using them as a places for delivery uh, and a places of interchange uh, for for these companies. Yeah, well, that, that's fantastic. By the way, I I I don't know. I, I as we're running out of time and we don't like to keep people longer than we we scheduled. I, I do want to for those who do have to leave. Um, offer a, a debt of gratitude and thanks to you for a fantastic delivery and conversation. It's very live and it's very, I think you've given us a very, very intimate view um, of, of a city uh, with a lot of observations that are often uh, m more hermetic than delivered. So you've shared a, a quite a lot and, and we appreciate that. Um, there are a lot of questions. I don't know. You know there's a part of me that says people like myself. Uh, I, I continue to follow the city of Barcelona because I find that it's been over the years very progressive. I remember when the forum opened and there was air misting for cooling and there were the experiments with the solar PVCs, photovoltaics. I mean, it, there's a lot of experimentation that goes on. I, I would share with, with uh, the listeners that Barcelona, like Paris, has had the good fortune of being built on, I guess, soft ground, if not mud. And it's uh, been fairly economic to excavate for underground parking and tr and transit. Those of us who are listening from New York, we dig through rock. We, we, we uh, tend to be very careful about using the below grade. Um, but nonetheless, it, it, I, your comment about deliveries in old parking, which I thought might have been a possibility, in Lower Manhattan, which has always had a delivery system, it's a good, it's a good, uh, a good thought. Uh, we can't, uh, I think, open up to many of the additional questions. I want to thank the people who've attended Barry and Doug and Ernie. This will be recorded. This is being recorded, and it does get um, delivered and mounted on the Consortium for Sustainable Urbanization website. Um, it will be there in a couple of formats, but eventually probably used to move to YouTube. Um, I think this is a, a, a presentation with a great value. Uh, it can be mined by very many people. Uh, your your images were were helpful and and and, in, and informative. So uh, I think I'm going to uh, let you go. We, we we've taken your time. Uh, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, uh, I I feel as this is one of the first years, the pandemic year, that I did not get to visit Barcelona. Um, I'm feeling encouraged by what I may now find anew when I visit next. I'm looking forward to a slightly less populated Ramblas and uh, and some dinners <laughs> in the in the uh, traditional outdoor cafes. So thank you so much, Joseph. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Corre and Heather. Um, thank you. Thank you very us. much, you all. Please thank all you. join us on the third for hopefully a, a, a nice uh, visit to Paris. And thank you all for attending. <laughs> thank you.